Crane? No, Scarecrow. These videos are not for children. If you're a children, then piss off. Hey there, it's me, your least favorite YouTuber, The Infuso. And previously, I promised I would talk about the problem with the Dark Knight Scarecrow. The only problem with the problem with Dark Knight Scarecrow is that when I was in the process of making that video, it became very evident to me that this isn't actually a problem that's exclusive to the Dark Knight. This isn't a problem with the Dark Knight Scarecrow. This is a problem with Scarecrow overall, or at least a problem in his placement in most Batman media. You see, to me, the Scarecrow is one of Batman's top-tier villains. I know that might not be a popular opinion, but really think about it. The man literally uses one's own fear against them. He has the ability to give you a nightmare-fueled bad trip on command. And even the strongest man, or uh, for that matter, Bat, has something to fear. Scarecrow as a villain basically uses his opponent's minds against them. In theory, you would think that that makes this guy unstoppable. The only person capable of truly stopping him would be Solomon Grundy. You know, for the, the lack of a mind thing. You see, he can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Scarecrow. The man's no fighter. So instead, he takes on the role of spectator, watching as those he comes across fight against their own demons. I think this makes him more than a valid threat. Essentially, anybody and everybody is at a disadvantage when they go up against him. And yet, for one reason or another, he's never treated as such. In terms of characterization, I think the Scarecrow is one of the most interesting in all of Batman's rogues gallery. Sure, he doesn't have the deep, psychological, sympathetic backstory that Mr. Freeze or Two-Face have, and he doesn't seem to operate under the notion of complete chaos and anarchy like the Joker and Harley Quinn, but there is something a little bit fascinating about a character born with a fascination of fear. While Jonathan Crane isn't a complex character, he is at least an interesting one. He's not the type of person you'd want to meet, but he is the type of guy you'd want to study. Like, I'm not inviting him to the bar, but I'll watch the ID Channel documentary whenever it drops. He's somebody that you would invest your attention into, but not at, like, close range, maybe from a distance. Again, I'm not going to act as if Scarecrow is perfectly developed. He isn't an intricate character with incredible depth. To be honest, he's kind of basic. What you see is what you get. But despite his simplicity, he's still very effective nonetheless. To me, he doesn't need a sympathetic origin or conflicting mental state to make an impact on Batman lore. His powers, and I am using that word pretty liberally, his powers are undoubtedly his defining trait, but that's not really a slight against him. His hallucinations lend to some of the most creative imagery the brand has ever seen. The Scarecrow's toxins create opportunities to advance plots, establish heroes and villains, and give the viewers, or readers depending on the format, insight into the character's psyches. The Scarecrow is an incredible addition to the world of Batman, but those in charge of making the movies, TV shows, and even video games haven't been clued into that little fact. And sometimes the comic books seem to know that, but even there, often he takes a backseat to other villains. Look, I don't mean to be condescending, because we've absolutely had great Scarecrow performances. I'm not knocking that at all. As a matter of fact, I would say we've probably had a lot more good than bad. Off the top of my head, I can think of one or two bad Scarecrow performances that have ever existed. And in contrast, I can think of about, like, five or six great ones. We have gotten good interpretations of the Scarecrow. Unfortunately, the projects the character has been a part of don't necessarily capitalize on the character. Despite having the ability to manifest one's greatest nightmares into reality, the Scarecrow is often forgotten about or just simply discarded in favor of other villains. It is shockingly common. In the TV series Gotham, Scarecrow is pretty prevalent in the final two seasons of the show. But it's also during that time that he's led by Joker stand-ins Jerome and Jeremiah Valeska. Pretty much all of Gotham's rogues gallery at the time joined him as well, but it still doesn't take away from the fact that he was completely subservient to another villain. In Batman Unlimited, he once again works as one of the Joker's underlings, and once again he's joined with a lot of that canon's antagonists. Then you have him in the Lego Batman movie, where once again he works as one of the Joker's underlings, and yet again, 
he's joined by a lot of that canon's antagonists. Or take, for example, Batman vs. the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, where we get a Scarecrow who works as one of Joker's underlings, and you guessed it, he's joined by a lot of that canon's main antagonists. It seems like a lot of the time Scarecrow is used, he's never really the focal point. He's just another name for nostalgia's sake or name recognition. There's never really a spotlight put on him, he's just kind of there. And theoretically, in everything I've listed thus far, he could easily be replaced with any other villain. His name might as well have been picked out of a hat. Luckily, we have other performances outside of this. So breaking the mold here, the character is utilized in Batman Hush, where he's shockingly not working for the Joker, but is instead acting as a pawn in Hush's master plan just like a lot of the other canon's antagonists. In Batman The Long Halloween, the power and threat of his fear toxin is realized and emphasized. But unfortunately, he himself is significantly less legitimate, as this Scarecrow eventually would become a henchman for Two-Face. And as you might have imagined, given everything I've said thus far, he is once again amongst a crowd of famous foes. In the Injustice series, the character is played by none other than Robert England. That's right, Freddy Krueger himself plays the Scarecrow. If this isn't perfect casting, then I don't know what is. One master of nightmares playing a master of fear? The character is kind of lost in a sea of familiar faces and memorable masks. And there's no real surprise there, because this is a fighting game using a plethora of DC characters. It's kind of the nature of the beast. In the Harley Quinn show, he barely plays a part, and is eventually, and pretty quickly, carelessly killed off at the end of the first season by the Joker, who just overall has a really negative impact on this man's fictional career, I'm realizing. You may have noticed a pattern here. There's never a spotlight put on Scarecrow. He's not often the main attraction in something. Which is mind-boggling to me, because really he should be. I think you could tell a really great Batman story using the Scarecrow alone. I don't think that there's necessarily a necessity to throw in every other bad guy anytime he's around. And even on the rare occasion that he's being promoted as the big bad, he inevitably still becomes a secondary character to another antagonist. Take the Dark Knight series, for example. He takes a back seat to quite literally every other bad guy in the franchise. In Batman Begins, despite being built up as the movie's main villain, it's eventually revealed that he's nothing more than a pawn of Ra's al Ghul. To make matters even worse, after being revealed as the demon's head's right hand, he's written out of the movie with zero clarification on his status. Because, you know, who cares? This is his last scene in the movie. It's like he stopped existing because the plot just stopped caring. Or at least the writers of said script did. I guess he technically gets defeated here, but he doesn't even lose at the hands of the Dark Knight. He gets beaten by Batman's girlfriend. Batman's girlfriend. Who is not a hero, mind you, in any way, shape, or form. She's just mildly interested in one. She tases Scarecrow, and then he leaves on the horse he rode in on. That's it. He doesn't even play into the climax at all. He was just used as another one of Ra's al Ghul's diversions. And once the jig is up, he's worthless. Worthless to Ra's, worthless to the League, worthless to the plot itself. So he just ceases existing. Now don't get me wrong, for the narrative this movie was creating, this works, but the fact that he was thrown away with next to no care makes the character feel like a total dud. And once again, like every other appearance of the character that I've previously listed, it makes it feel like this role could have been filled in by almost anybody. His only real purpose to the plot was to help Ra's al Ghul fear gas the city. There was a great performance here. So good, in fact, that he was asked to come back for the next two movies in cameo form. He's naturally a little bit unsettling. Even when he's at his most mundane, he's so comfortably unnerving with how confident he is within his own absurdity. I really enjoyed this take on the character, and clearly I wasn't the only one. Which is why he was brought back for every installment in this franchise, which at the time was practically unheard of. Yeah, there was Magneto, and that was it. Before that, never been done. 
His returns to the role really didn't see much of an effect to the plot at play either, but that wasn't really expected as his presence was just enough to be thankful for. But this was just window dressing. There seemed to be a glimmer of hope in the Arkham series. We get two really incredible takes on the character. There's something to compare between both performances, but there's also a lot more to contrast. In his first appearance, he along with every other inmate in Arkham Asylum, was shown to be subservient to the Joker. What a shock. But then later on in Arkham Knight, he's kind of given a soft reboot. Both his design and voice actor were changed in between games, and the character was finally given a seat of power. Scarecrow is shown to be a dominance-hungry terrorist looking to rule over the wasteland known as Gotham City. He's much more menacing than in his previous appearance. And despite all that's built up with this character this time around, he ultimately takes a backseat to the titular character, the Arkham Knight, and then later on, the Joker. And by the way, that's despite the Joker having already been canonically dead at this point. The ghost of a clown took precedent over the ruler of Gotham City following a hostile takeover. There's this weird pattern that I didn't notice until I made this video. The Joker's mere existence is more damaging to Scarecrow than anything Batman could ever do. It's both sad and strange to me to see how often Scarecrow is carelessly discarded by creators, and how often it is in favor of showcasing the Joker. This underhanded misuse of the villain makes almost every one of his appearances, sans Batman the Animated Series, feel like a missed opportunity. How could a big bad with the ability to break someone mentally, to manifest their greatest fears and bring their nightmares into reality, not be utilized better than this? Did we all just forget what this guy can do? Or what his intentions are? It's strange to me seeing him play the role of henchman so many times over when one time would probably be enough to call it a mistake. As far as I'm concerned, Scarecrow deserves better. And I truly hope we get to see more useful variants of this character over time. But with all that being said, if you like this video and want to see more Batman content, let me know in the comment section below by leaving a comment saying, How about a little fire, Scarecrow? I was your least favorite YouTuber, V Infuso, and I thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. I am vengeance. I am the knight. And that was V Infuso. Just remember. If you're not tuning in, then you're missing out. So, if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole, and you too would like to become a V-generate, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, nerds! And if you're not joining the fun, you're in for one bad day. And you know what they say about having one bad day. <laughs> Catch him next time. Same bad time. Same bad channel.